All right, hello everybody. My name is Dalton Brunlinger, and welcome to the next series of Let's Play Sailwind. As you can tell from the beginning of the video, uh, that little journal entry, uh, we're going to be doing a roleplay series, or the closest thing I can get to a roleplay series with uh, with this game in its current condition. Um, so yeah, this isn't going to be uh, just sailing around, just trying to get as much money as possible. I kind of want to try and tell a story with this particular series, at least as much as I can. So things are going to be a little bit different with this playthrough. Um, so uh, there's not really much I can say other than we're going to be starting off with a boat I haven't shown on my channel before, which is uh, the Kakum. Basically, we're going to be starting off in the Emerald Archipelago. And our character, our uh, guy that's writing the journal entries, he's lived on this island his entire life. He's never really gone away from home very, for very long. He's pretty much been on this island. He might have gone from one island to another, just kind of catching a ride with a local sailor. But other than that, he has basically next to no experience with sailing. Which is going to be kind of difficult for me, for as far as metagaming goes, because I've played this game an absolute crap ton. I'm approaching almost 400 hours on Steam. But I'm going to try and roleplay this as best as I can. And the main thing we want to try and do with this character is we want to try and look for a stable career, which is going to be, well... I don't want to spoil it, but if you've been watching my previous videos, you pretty much know what's going to be going on. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the game. Now, since this is the very beginning of a new uh, series, I want to go ahead and kind of treat it as if uh, it's your first time watching this game. For any uh, potential newcomers who are coming to the game, who might take an interest in it, who are having trouble with it, um, or are just interested in sailing, uh, I'm going to treat this as maybe your first time you've seen this game as well as maybe this channel. So if you've been with me for a while, kind of stick with me. Uh, we'll get past that probably in the next episode. So yeah, uh, if this is your first time seeing this game, if you want to know anything about the game, you can just look at the screen here. It has links to the Discord. It has the... E developer's email it has uh, his twitter account uh so on and so on and so on so if you want to like contact the developer for anything uh there's his information all right so now typically what i would do is i would grab all this stuff and just go and sell it to the market but we're playing as a character who has no idea what the heck he's doing so we want to keep this stuff as much of it as possible because we want to get every single advantage that we can. Um, now, the most important thing here would probably be the scroll, right? You know, it tells you how, how to sail, how, uh, the, the, how the markets work, uh, how to actually raise and lower the anchor, raise and lower the sails, uh, how to moor the boat to the dock, uh, the sailing techniques, and, well... I'm pretty sure in real life you know if you're hungry, tired, or if you're thirsty, so <laughs> uh, we'll just kind of ignore that page down there. So I would sell this were it up to like any other type of playthrough, but we want to keep as much of the stuff as we can because we need every advantage that we can possibly get. So uh, what do we have to start off with? We have a very tiny boat with not a lot of cargo space. And in fact, what I might actually do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this table. I know this is kind of a potentially bad thing to do because it takes up so much room, but like I said, we, we don't know what we're doing with this character. This character has absolutely no idea what the heck is going on, so we need every single advantage that we can get. Uh, let's see here. Maybe put the table down like that. Then we can put the map there. We can put our lantern 
there as well. Let's go ahead and put the... Uh, I think I'll put the mug there so it's close by to my water. And then the compass, I think we can just hold on to. Okay, so the boat was owned by someone previously, but he just retired from trading. And we do not want to go back to working for our father, which is a local carpenter. Um, we used to work for a fishery, but it closed down some, some months back. And hello there, fellow trader. So I'm going to assume that this character has, you know, he's looked at the, sh at the ships coming in, he's talked to some to a few of the sailors, and he's heard the stories of uh, distant lands that they've been to, he's heard the stories of, you know, rough seas and adventure, and it really appeals to him. So, we've applied through this office here, but this office is not a self, is like a, is not a, self-owned or private business it is like a larger corporation kind of thing so what we need to do is we need to come in here and talk to uh it's hard to tell if you're a man or a woman i'm going to assume you're a woman from the side view <laughs> um although with your hair and face it looks like you might be a guy, I don't know. But anyway, Sue here is going to have me go to Sanctuary for my first mission because it is very easy. You just have to kind of go along the beach of Crab Beach to the northeast and to Sanctuary, which is very close by. So yeah, we're going to take some coconuts. And uh, if there's anything else... Ah, seafood. And bananas. They pay the exact same amount. So, in that case, we'll just take the bananas because... They're lighter. So, the biggest problem that we've got is this boat has crud all for cargo space. Uh, this ship is the smallest starting ship you can actually get in the game. In fact, I believe it is the smallest ship, period, in the game. Uh, but our character doesn't know that. He's just happy to be, you know, having this opportunity to finally sail amongst the, the oceans and whatnot. Our father might not approve, but... We are taking charge of our own life. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and come up here. So if, if you're new to the game, um, everything you do on your boat has a weight effect. Even your own character has a weight. So you want to be very careful when you're loading your boat. You don't want to have it too heavy on one side or the other. You want to try and load everything in the middle as you possibly can. Alright, so we have two days to deliver this stuff to Sanctuary, which should be more than enough time. But one thing I do want to do is I want to come up here and... How much money do I have? I have... 500 emerald dragons. That's probably all I have saved up for. This is like all that's left in my savings account. So let's go ahead and we'll buy... Ugh, the lanterns are pretty expensive. And so are these, actually. Debating if I actually want to buy one of those. Um, hmm. How much money are we going to be bringing in? That's 91, that's 80. Okay, so... If we buy this, we will make a surplus, but not much. So I'll just go ahead and I'll just keep the lantern towards the back. I wanted to kind of provide you guys with a little bit of light, but I don't think that's going to happen for now. 
Okay, uh, let's go ahead and kind of angle the sail. Uh, our character has probably had a few tips and pointers about how to how the the lines work and the ship works in general. So I think that'd probably be you know reasonable. He's he's picked up a few tips and tricks over the years as he's talked to sailors and traders as they as they've come in. I don't think that would be unreasonable to assume. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll raise up this sail. We want to get just a little bit of momentum to get us away from the dock. Okay. That's that's the line going from there to to there. Okay, I, th I thought we were still moored to the dock there for a second. I was about to be very confused. So, yeah, this challenge is probably going to be a bit more interesting than the Dow only challenge. The Dow only challenge had the advantage where I was in the Dow, um, which had a much larger cargo space than this. I believe the Dow is actually roughly about the same length, but the problem is the cockpit is like all the way back here, or at least the helm anyway, whatever you want to call it. The helm is all the way back here. Whereas in this thing, the helm is all the way up here in the very middle. That was my coat falling off the coat hanger, but oh well. But yeah, this this boat just has next to no cargo space, but I think we're far, far enough out now. We can go ahead and start raising up the rear sail here. Now, I personally have next to no real experience with this particular vessel. I've never really played around with it too much. So you'll have to kind of go easy on me with the whole suggestions and uh, throwing tips and tricks out there, because I don't really know what I'm doing with this ship entirely myself. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to kind of wing it and hope I get everything as close to accurate as I can. I think this can probably be moved out just a little bit. Yeah, you don't want the wind to hit your sails directly. You want the wind to kind of roll off your sails. But not to such a minuscule amount. And the problem is, like, th these things are not entirely accurate. I find the, uh, the ones that are up on top of the mast to be much more accurate than, than these things. <clears throat> but anyway... Uh, let's see here. Where do we want to put... I guess I'll put the lamp there. So, hello. Do I actually have... Huh. I think I accidentally deleted that mod. Or maybe I uninstalled... Or maybe I just disabled it or something. I'll have to check whenever I... Uh, load the game again. Okay, you should be catching plenty of wind. Why does it feel like we're going so slow? Okay, well, whatever. So we can see our destination 
out there in the distance, like right about there, that would be Sanctuary, which this character has never been to before. The only, the only islands I'm going to assume this character has potentially been to is maybe the Dragon Cliffs themselves. But it's only been, you know, a handful of times, maybe once or twice. So he's very excited to get out there and discover, you know, other islands. And I might as well kind of play like a tourist sort of role too. Like whenever we go to a new island, we might as well take a little look-see around. Might as well take a day or two off just to kind of see what's, what's happening. I think real realistically, that's probably what you would do. There's another merchant out there. So I will say, like, I I don't like how small and compact this this boat is, but I will say, as far as starting vessels go, this thing is probably the coziest looking vessel that there is. I mean, you've got the hammock here, you've got this nice solid roof, you've got some windows you can look out, you know, you've got protection from the sun, you've got protection from the rain, you've got protection from the wind. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's a nicely built boat, all things considered. And I think for the first time we go to another island, uh, I'll just show the entire thing as much as I can. <clears throat> but I will cut out the, the sleeping parts. Which, speaking of sleep, I should probably... I'll go ahead and just sleep now. That way, whenever we wake up, we'll either be parallel with Sanctuary, or we'll probably have sailed past it a little ways. But, yeah. So I will show the first time that I sleep, just so I can kind of show off the, the effects to the newcomers. Uh, whenever you fall asleep, you're stuck asleep. Uh, the only way you can wake up is if your character wakes up themselves. You'll wake up for storms if you run aground, uh, maybe during a wind change, <clears throat> or if something unexpected happens. Uh, your character will kind of wake up automatically, but otherwise you're stuck waiting until this bar fills up completely. But because there's no fast travel in the game, uh, you're pretty much stuck sailing to every single location uh, in real time. But sleeping will kind of speed up the, the journey a little bit. And it looks like we kind of slept through a bit of a wind change here. Which I suppose is fine. Are we moving forward yet? Let me turn the lantern on so you guys can see what the heck is happening. Yeah, we're still... I guess I just need to get the sails turned all the way in. So we can catch as much wind as we as possible. The 
Come on, little boat. You know you want to. There we go. So yeah, I don't have the Unlimited Lanterns mod anymore. That's interesting. I'll have to reinstall it. Go ahead and hydrate a little bit. And I only have so much food. I want to kind of eat my food sparingly here. Eventually, we'll have so much money, we won't know what to do with it all. But for right now, we're about as broke as a joke. So, <laughs> all right. So, I know it's dark for you guys, but because I don't have the Unlimited Lantern mod, I'd like to try and preserve that as much as I can. <clears throat> In fact, you know what? Eh. I'll try and sleep again. I'm, I'll go ahead and raise or lower this sail. And... I'll lower this one a little bit as well. Think about three sections, I think, should probably be good enough. So I will sleep through the night or as close to it as I can, and I'll see you guys soon. Okay, the sun is starting to come up. You can kind of see the sky is starting to get a little bit brighter. And you can also make out the lights of port. So let's go ahead and raise that up completely again. And we'll do the same over here. Unfortunately, I don't have a way of telling time because clocks in this game are unreasonably expensive. Of course, I guess back in these days, they probably might have been. I don't think the game has any, like, real specific time era it takes place in. Um, my closest guess is probably going to be, like, some colonial time period. Kind of like American Revolution era time period. I don't think it can be 1800s because steam engines were starting to become very popular in the 1800s. The late 1700s, I believe, as well. But definitely the 1800s. I mean, they weren't powerful by any stretch of the imagination, but they were definitely becoming more and more useful. Bare minimum, you wouldn't have to wait for a favorable wind to get out of dock with a, with a steam engine. Then you could sail directly against the wind if you needed to. So I have raised that idea, but a lot of people were kind of against it. <laughs> um, the ability to actually buy like an actual steam engine in the game. Not like a super powerful one, but something that would allow you to sail against the wind for a short amount of time, so long as you had enough coal to feed the engine. But 
the to kind of balance it out, the boat would be extremely expensive, and you couldn't carry very much cargo with it either. Because in the early days, the steam engines took up almost the entirety of the, of the ship. They were <laughs> absolutely enormous. Now, Sanctuary is actually a very, very pretty island. You've kind of got this archway over here, which you can't, it's not really that great now, but whenever the sun comes up, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the town itself, even though it's itty bitty little tiny, it's it's a very pretty little town, I will say. This this island is is really cool, but it's not my favorite. I do like that it has this kind of characteristic to it, though. Uh, in fact, most of the islands in this region are uh, very characteristic in some way or another. And it looks like we're kind of sailing dead onto the wind. I don't really like that. So let me turn to, to port here. Now, admittedly, the sunrises and sunsets are not quite like ETS-2 or American Truck Simulator standards, but they are gorgeous. They are downright beautiful sunrises and sunsets, as you would probably expect whenever you're out on the ocean, you know. Yeah, I keep wanting to pull out a, a spyglass, but this character does not have a spyglass. We are just now starting our adventure. Though I think buying a spyglass probably would not be the worst first short-term investment. That way I can at least see the islands that I'm coming up on. So the wind is blowing pretty much almost dead on from the east. So I'm going to sail out a little ways in this direction, then kind of turn around and try and catch the wind as we come back to the dock. We'll have the wind at our back. Now, I am kind of metagaming here, I know, but I'm going to assume that, you know, the character... We're playing as even though he's never really been on a boat before he probably has at least some kind of common sense and he says okay well you know the, the wind is catching the sails here so if i turn in that direction that the the boat is going to lose all this momentum so i might as well try and sail uh out a little ways into the open ocean here and try and come back with the wind at my back You would think that would be common sense, but common sense is uh, not so common these days. Is there any chance I can just kind of put the map... There we go. Yeah, we're going to have the map nice and straight there. Then that means I now have a table. Or I could put all this other stuff on. In fact, I might just put the scroll on top of the water barrel. Yeah, now I've got some room I can kind of clear the table out with. Okay, so let's turn now. I think we've gone far enough. And holy crap! This thing turns on an absolute dime. OK. 
Okay, here in a minute I'm going to have to eat something. And let's go ahead and get a few drinks as well. Actually, you know, thinking about it, a fishing pole would probably be a very good first investment because they're pretty cheap and hooks are very affordable as well. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and lower this. Uh, for anybody who's new, there is ship customization in the game. You can configure your ships in uh, numerous different ways. I think this ship is probably fine the way it is, though. I've tried kind of sailing around with it off screen a little bit. I tried putting like one mast with like a main sail, and that didn't really work out so great. Okay, let's go ahead and lower. Lower you, lower you down to there. And then we'll lower you all the way now. Let's do a sharp turn to kind of bleed off some momentum. Because the water does have physics in this game. Okay, let's uh, grab you. We'll tighten the boat to the dock. And then we'll tighten you as well. There we go. Our boat is not going anywhere. So, we have the coconuts. And then we have the bananas. Alright, so where are we taking them? They're over there. Gotcha. That's the bananas taken care of. This will be the coconuts taken care of. Alright, so since we're new here, we've never really been here before, let's go ahead and we'll play at the tourist a little bit. Kind of a smaller town, this one. It doesn't really have anything going on here. It has this one little stall that has this castle thing, this mansion, castle, fortress, whatever you want to call it. You can't do anything with it, at least not yet. At least I don't think you can. No, you can't even go up to the doors. There's an invisible wall here. <laughs> um, then over here, there is a merchant that sells bottled water and these energy elix elixirs, which are outrageously expensive, 
at least for right now, I am not going to bother purchasing one. I'm going to take my money, all 668 Emerald Dragons of it, and be on my way. And I think that is going to wrap it up for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing because I will have more on the way very, very shortly. But in the meantime, God bless, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!